Okay, we're now ready to import our city lights onto the dark side of the planet. Um, and again, we're going to be copying and pasting the effect from another layer, which means our time slider has to be at zero or things are not going to line up. So drag your time slider to zero. I'm just going to collapse down my ocean layer there. And I'm going to click on the effect of my continents layer again, just because it's easy to get to. And making sure the word effect is highlighted, I'll hit Control C to copy those effects. I'm going, to, I'm going to click on my project tab, which is over here. If you can't see it, drag this out a bit, click on the word project. And I'm now going to drag in the uh, city light, city ocean cut. Um, I'm going to drag that into my layers above the ocean there. And now uh, I can just hit Control D. And because my time slide is at zero, and because I haven't resized any of the images, and because I've pasted them directly into the layers area down here, everything is lined up in space and time. So that when I paste those effects on, they are perfectly layered up over the planet. Okay? So as cool as this looks, uh, we need to do some blending modes on the city light and change some of these uh, settings so that we can see the terrain underneath. So the first thing we'll notice is that we can't see the city lights on the dark side of the planet, which is annoying. So I'm going to go and and even if we were to go and uh, give it a blending mode, that won't fix the issue. So first of all, let's make sure that we know how to give a blending mode to this so we can see through it. Um, many of you won't have a mode column in After Effects. Um, you should see a, a, the word mode here. If you don't have that, right click anywhere in this bar here, go to Columns, and make sure that modes is checked. It then should put a mode next to your the names of your layers. If you click on the word normal, you can change it. And we're going to need to change our city light to screen. And then we can see the terrain underneath, but we can still see our city light on top. Now we need to change the effect of the CC sphere rise uh, or CC sphere um, so that we can have the lights on the dark side. So we'll go to the drop down of the city ocean cut, go to effects and go to CC sphere. And the problem or the thing that's causing a problem here is actually the light and the light direction is coming from this side. We need to trick it and have the light direction coming from the other side of the planet so that we can see our city lights over there. This will also help uh, turn the city lights off on the light side of the planet. So what we can do, or what I just did there, was I got the light direction and it was at minus 85 and I very carefully dragged that around so that the lights filled up, if I go to fit over here, so that the lights fill up the dark side of the planet. Okay, so try and find a, have a good guess to see what you think is the opposite side, um, but that works for me. And you can even change the light height um, if you want. Maybe people turn the lights off later in the day on this planet. Maybe you want to see some more lights. But if you go too far again, um, it won't work. So I would set it to uh, somewhere about here, or the default value will be absolutely fine. And then just drag that along. Just make sure you're happy with when the lights are turning off. And if you do want to see them last a bit longer, because they look really cool, then go ahead and increase the light height to allow them to stay on for longer in the day. The next step is to uh, use levels to get rid of some of these uh, lighter areas over here. My concern is that uh, the empty areas where the city is not is still really kind of bright compared to the water. And if there's nothing there, there should be nothing emitting light. And this should be just as dark as these bodies of water that we can see. So we need to do some special color correction uh, effects on this. So again in our effects and preset settings on the right hand side I'm going to scroll down and find something called levels. Making sure that my ocean cut layer is selected I'm just going to double click on the levels and it should bring up this window in our effect controls over here. And all we have to do to make this the dark areas darker is um, see where it says input black over here we can type in 10 into there and we can see that that's now made the um, non habited or uninhabited areas of the planet just as dark as the bodies of water and it should look a bit more realistic 
So I just, and you can see that as we did that, this little arrow moved from the left a bit to the right. So input black value of 10 for this image works really well. I'm not happy with the color of these lights. They're pure white and that's really boring. And it's in fact, it's really hard to make pure white light um, in life. And so when we look at satellite images of the earth, most city lights are yellow or orange. Um, and some futuristic cities perhaps maybe blue as they go towards using LED lights. But let's go ahead and change the color of these lights. So again, we're going to go over to hue and saturation and double click on that. So now this layer has um, the effects of the sphere, levels and hue and saturation. So with the hue and saturation section over here, just go to colorize um, and usually red is a default color. We can scroll down to where it says colorize hue and you can drag this value around until you find a nice orange um, yellow or yellowy value. Or if you want to look for a futuristic planet, perhaps it's some kind of blue or something. But I'm going to go for a nice uh, orange shade like this. Uh, and the saturation is a bit dull. You can drag that saturation value up a bit to even up to 45 if you want. Um, and the city lights will look extra orange. So when we look at images of cities on the earth from above, um, sometimes they are a bit blurry um, as they pass through clouds or smog. So, so I'm going to add a blurry layer on top of this. I'm going to duplicate this uh, city lights layer. But that's going to make them extra bright. So before I duplicate my layer, I'm going to go to the transform uh, down here and go to uh, opacity and drag the opacity down from 100% to 75%. Uh, once you've made your uh, city lights layer a bit less apparent, you can then click on the layer and do Control D for duplicate, and that will duplicate the city lights. And again, they'll be much brighter now. But now we can go to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Gaussian Blur. Gaussian Blur is the most commonly used method for blurring stuff in After Effects and Photoshop. And now this this uh, layer has another plugin associated to it underneath hue and saturation, you will now see a Gaussian blur section. And if we go over to the blurriness um, value over here, I could type in a value of 5. And that's very slight, but it's just enough to give the city lights um, a bit of a blur. I can turn this effect on and off so we can see the effect that it has. And again, it should just make it look like there's a bit of smog or atmosphere that these lights uh, are being diffused by uh, just a bit uh, and that should look quite good. So once you have the city lights in, I can now collapse my layers down just so I can see where I'm at and go back to my project tab over here um, and now we're ready to add clouds on top of our city lights. So again, making sure your time slide is at zero, drag the clouds layer into um, the very top and then I'm just going to copy the effect again from the continents layer. I'm just going to go down here, click on the word effects of my continents layer, hit control C, go to clouds, hit control B, and they should be on top of the planet. Again, we can't see through these clouds at the moment because the blending mode is set to normal. If we change that to screen, we can now see through the clouds perfectly. And if we drag our time slider along or even uh, preview this, we can see that the planet spins um, just as fast as the clouds like that, and that looks quite nice. Um, I would, and obviously in real life, the clouds, you would, we wouldn't notice that they're moving. Um, but just because we do actually have these clouds as a separate layer, um, I would even suggest that we make the clouds spin at a slightly different speed to the planet, just because we can. And it'll just give it a bit more of a... Uh, of an interesting or of a layered look to it. So if we go to the uh, 05 clouds layer and drop down on that and then drop down in effects as well and find your CC sphere, drop down in that too. And then you can see there's two grayed out keyframes here. They grayed out because they are contained within uh, a, a sub menu and we can't see them yet. So again, find what layer they are on, it's obviously in rotation, drop down for rotation, and now we can see rotation Y has these two keyframes. All I want to do is change the value of one of these keyframes so that the clouds move maybe just ever so slightly slower than the planet 
underneath. And so this may take some tweaking, and I don't want the clouds to look like they're moving at a million miles an hour, but I'm just going to move rotation Y, and we can just have a go at this, and just drag these clouds perhaps a bit this way, just so they're not going quite as fast as a planet. So it's just a tiny, tiny bit. And if I now preview this again, I can see that they are moving underneath the clouds. The city lights are going underneath, but it's, it looks the clouds will probably slow down a bit too much there. Um, so you, you've just got to be quite picky with this. But I'm just going to, again, move them back to a bit more the direction the planet was going originally. Um, let's have a look now. And something like this should be uh, pretty much fine. So as long as it's not going too fast and the difference in speed isn't too vast, that should be fine. And again, if you, if you don't think you want to do that or you think it looks tacky, then don't worry about it. But um, it should make it look a bit more fun. Now if we zoom back out, um, and if you do want to fit your whole view, uh, viewport in here, you can just click on where it says 50% or whatever here and just go to fit so you can see your whole workspace. Um, and now we just need to get finished giving this planet some atmosphere. And so we've got the atmosphere layer that we created in Photoshop. And I'm going to drag that on top. Obviously, it's completely the wrong size. So I can, uh, if I just hold down shift over here, hold down shift and click on these corner toggles, I can resize it down. It's obviously on the wrong, wrong blending mode. I can go and change that to screen. And... Just drag it down so it's about the right size. Again, make sure that you're not cutting off the atmosphere on either side of the planet when you do this. And always hold down shift so that it stays as a perfect circle. So something like that will be fine. And now if I hit play, um, it should look fairly realistic. And we've now successfully bought some images, uh, laid them up, applied some simple effects to them. And we've got something that looks like a fairly realistic looking planet that's spinning... Um, like this. In the next step, we're going to go ahead and put a moon in orbiting the planet.